hey, it's me. So I believe every living being is searching for something deeper. Every person, whether they realize it or not, is looking for a deeper connection, a deeper connection with God, the universe, a higher power, whatever word you wish to choose to call it. Even those who say they don't believe in anything, they're seeking God too. Because we all want happiness, love, and security. And that's what God is. Sometimes when people aren't spiritually aware, they try to find these things in other places. Right? They might think money will bring them security, or they look for it in relationships, maybe their work. Some people chase success, hoping admiration and recognition will fill that space. But if true security is what we're after, and let's be honest, who doesn't want that? These things just aren't enough, especially if they replace the deeper connection that only a harmonious relationship with a higher power can provide. It's similar when it comes to love. If we seek love from others with the energy that's meant for loving God, we'll often feel empty or unsatisfied. But don't get me wrong, loving and being loved by others is essential and wonderful. However, when God holds the central place in our hearts, human love finds its proper place too. And if for some reason we lose that human love, our lives won't feel meaningless because our foundation is solid. So I'm proposing that everyone is searching for God, even if they don't know it. Just like plants lean toward the sun, seeking light and warmth, we lean toward God. Often we're not even aware we're doing it. Only when we find God within ourselves will our hearts find rest, and life will start to make sense. We'll begin to understand why we've faced certain difficulties and why certain things have happened to us, things that might have seemed cruel or like bad luck at the time. Life will have a deep meaning, and we won't be bitter about the hardships anymore. We'll be grateful for them even, because we'll see how they've helped us grow. I think people search for God in different ways, but he can't be found outside of ourselves. I don't think God is found necessarily in a building or up in the sky. He lives within each of us. Even though we might know this, many still search in the wrong places. No matter what you believe, the only way to find God is by going through your own lower self, the parts of you that you might not like or want to face. Think of it like this. Imagine you have a treasure buried deep in the ground. Let's say it's in your backyard. The only way to get it is to dig through the dirt. You have to get your hands dirty for a while, but you know it's worth it because at the end of that is that treasure. And there's just no other way. You have to dig through the dirt. So why not do the work to uncover the treasure of God within you? Hoping to find the greatest treasure without facing your own shortcomings doesn't make sense. It's like trying to get that treasure in your backyard without digging through the dirt. Yet, many still hope to do just that. Some people try to find God by seeking general knowledge or doing certain spiritual exercises while ignoring the real issues right in front of them. If you tackle the immediate difficulties in your life and look within, you'll find God is much closer than you thought. If you try any other way, he'll seem infinitely distant. To find God, you need to recognize your hidden feelings and see them in the light of divine truth. Be honest about how you really react and feel instead of pretending otherwise. As we've talked about, I propose we start by clearing our faults, seeing our faults for what they truly are. No 
know, we need to find those parts of ourselves we're not even aware of yet. So test yourself about your true feelings only by taking this path, facing your lower self and working through it step by step with courage. Will you find true happiness and security in God? Now you might be wondering as I say this, well, how can I do that? And there are many ways to start. We've mentioned a few. It's understood by those on the journey that you often have to tackle problems from more than one angle. You can't find God without working to overcome your imperfections. At the same time, you can't overcome these imperfections all by yourself. No matter how strong or willing you are, you need God's help. So it's kind of a back and forth process. First, consider meditating to recognize and understand your imperfections and faults. And then from there, build a bridge. Honestly, analyze what's going on inside you. Maybe analyze isn't the best word. It's more about bringing awareness to it. We don't want to overthink it. It's not as hard as it might seem, as long as you truly want to do it. You need to recognize that there is a lazy part in all of us, that part that doesn't want to put in the effort or face discomfort. As long as you don't see this laziness in yourself, you can't move forward. At one point, your work focuses on the imperfections in your lower self. At another, you actively ask for God's help, even if you don't feel a strong connection with him just yet. With whatever connection you have, ask for his assistance to keep building that bridge. And it's that ongoing process that's required for you to work from both sides. Now, I can tell you there's a sure way, a shortcut in a sense, to establish a personal relationship with God. Many believe in God but still have doubts deep down. Sometimes we're afraid to face those doubts, hoping they'll just go away if we ignore them. That's not how it works. You're made up of many conflicting feelings, and that's okay. It's okay to acknowledge that. So I suggest not to be afraid to face the part of you that doesn't believe in God. Admit it. Admitting this doubt is already a step forward. And you might think, well, if there's no God, why should I give up what I want? Why should I sacrifice anything? Bring those thoughts to light. Bring those thoughts into the open. Because then you start to shape the problem so you can deal with it. And then from there, you can have an honest conversation with yourself. If there really is no God, I'm not risking anything by asking, am I? And if there is, I want to know. You might say, God, part of me believes in you and part of me doesn't. Please help me understand. Facing this question instead of avoiding it opens the door to enlightenment. And if you come to know God truly exists, you might wonder if you're willing to let go of your own desires for his will. Here's the thing. You can't fully experience the reality of God until you're ready to make that sacrifice. We often wait for God to show himself before we decide to trust him. I'll believe it when I see it, essentially. It works the opposite way. Believe it to see it. By being willing to put aside your own will for his, you open yourself up to experiencing him. This way, you solve two problems at once. You discover the reality of God's existence, and you address your attachment to your own desires. So be ready to let go of what you want if you're not aligned with God's will. And it doesn't put you at a disadvantage when you do this. In fact, everything will start to feel right in ways you might not even have imagined. You'll start to notice this harmony in your life that's unmistakable. Now, I know it might seem difficult to know what to sacrifice or how to do it. And it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. The less others know about it, the better. It's not about ego or seeking praise. If you're facing a tough decision or constant disharmony in your life, 
take that as a sign that something might be off. Bring whatever that is, your problem, your decision, your strong attachment to God. Be completely open and ask yourself what you really want. Be honest about your desires. Then consider whether what you truly want is in line with God's will. If doubts come up, like questioning whether God even exists, acknowledge them. It's okay to have those feelings, to have those doubts. Facing them, like I said, is a step forward. You might say to God, If I know you're real, I'll be ready to let go of what I want. Are you really willing to do that? If you're prepared to accept even the option you like least, as long as it's God's will, then you're taking another huge step along your spiritual path. It's that willingness that's kind of like knocking on a door, and only then will the door open. You gotta knock first. Trusting in God, even when you can't see him, and even if the path isn't what you would choose, is key. This applies to big decisions and small ones. Some people prefer to start with smaller steps while others jump right into the big stuff. Either way is fine, as long as you're moving forward. After you make this shift, God becomes a profound reality in your life and doubts start to fade away. Many people don't realize what their unconscious beliefs about God are. Maybe, for example, you see him as this strict figure who doesn't understand your struggles. Or maybe you think your problems are too small for him to even care about. Neither is true. God cares about every aspect of your life and understands you better than anyone else ever could. So don't hesitate to bring any problem to him, no matter how big or small. He understands and wants to help as long as you're willing to trust him more than yourself. I know what I've shared with you here isn't easy. It can almost feel like spiritual dynamite. It might be a real struggle within yourself. If you're sincere, though, in letting go of your self-will for God's will, your life will change in amazing ways. Take time to reflect on where you are in your life, where you might need to make the shift. Be honest with yourself. It might take weeks or months, and that's okay. The important thing is to aim for this openness with God. Now, if you find you're not ready yet, admit that. Admit that to yourself. Again, it's better to be honest and continue working on it than to force it and not be sincere. Being truthful with yourself prepares you to eventually take that big step on your spiritual journey. Before I finish up, I just want to remind you of a powerful tool that I've mentioned before, the daily review. You don't need to be far along in self-development to even do this. Anyone can do this. Each day, take 10 or 15 minutes to reflect on any moments that may have disturbed your inner peace. Now, you don't have to write down everything. It could just be bullet points. Over time, you'll start to see patterns in what affects you. And this will give you valuable insights into your inner world. So after keeping this daily review for a while, Read through your notes and see if you can spot any recurring themes or patterns. Ask yourself, how might these be connected to any of my own faults or areas where I might be out of sync with deeper truths? Ask God for enlightenment and understanding these patterns. This practice doesn't take much time. It doesn't take much effort, yet it can be incredibly helpful and making the unconscious conscious. It's straightforward. It's a straightforward way to gain self-knowledge, which is essential in finding the divinity within you. Give it a try. For your own sake, take these steps towards uncovering the deeper truths within you. Remember, I'm here for you. We're on this journey together. Love you. Connect soon.